Coming up as we move toward colder months, how to be prepared for unexpected power outages. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. It's getting chilly outside and colder weather means more heat and more energy being used. Yesterday, thousands in Powell County were left without power. It was restored a few hours later, but with those cooler temperatures, how can you prepare? Julia Sander talked with power company officials about some tips for the home. It's a busy time of the year for utility companies in the Commonwealth. With colder temperatures coming our way, it's important to stay prepared in case of a power outage. We have a severe storm with heavy ice, uh, you know, and high winds and snow that could lead to massive power outages. First thing you've got to know is our crews are going to work extremely hard to as safely and as quickly as possible restore power. Daniel Lowry with Kentucky Utilities says their crews and trucks can deal with all types of weather. Just like KU, Nick Comer with East Kentucky Power says after dealing with deep freezes and harsh winters throughout the years, they're able to work quickly and efficiently. Last December, we saw uh, winter storm Elliott uh, hit Kentucky. It hit all of the eastern United States. Uh, uh, extreme cold, high winds over uh, a pretty large geographic area. And that meant that uh, a lot of power plants over the eastern U.S. were working really hard to keep the power flowing. And we want to make sure that our power plants are ready for that so that we have a little bit of excess power just in case something like that happens. He says before a storm hits, be sure to have flashlights, food, and water. And if your power does go out and you want to use a generator, make sure it's a safe distance from your house. That our system is built to withstand extreme conditions and safely and reliably uh, meet the energy demands that customers have. Julia Sandor, WKYT. If not used or handled properly, several items in your home this time of year can start a fire. In November and December, fire officials tend to receive more reports of fires than usual. From, cook, uh, from Christmas trees to cooking, it's important to pay attention to what you are doing. Corbin Fire Public Information Officer Nathan Kirby also says you should not use a cheap extension cord when using items such as space heaters. They're cheap and they don't have a ground and they're not really rated for a really large power draw. It would be a bad idea to run a small ceramic space heater off of this. If you're going to use a, an appliance or anything or multiple devices, it's better to get a large, robust orange extension cord. It has a better power rating. Kirby says you should also double check to make sure no wire is exposed. Well, the heater will get a workout tonight, also on Tuesday night, as we are getting a little bit of a winter preview across the mountains as we see temperatures in the upper 20s and lower 30s at this hour, down to 28 for Wise, also Grundy, 30 in Jackson, 31 for Pikeville, and 32 over in Somerset, also Middlesboro. So most of us at or below freezing at this hour, and some even cooler weather is on the way by tonight. As you can see on the radar, we are dry, and those clouds continue to fade away. So once we see a clear sky and those calm winds, those temperatures are going to tumble overnight into the middle and upper 20s as you wake up on Tuesday. So we, once again, we are giving you that first alert to maybe get some extra time out there on your Tuesday morning commute because we could see some frost and also a hard freeze in some areas as we could see temperatures back in the middle 20s and then some more cold weather by Tuesday night. Also Wednesday morning, but some improvements on the way by Thursday. Also Friday temperatures back in the 50s. Also tracking though some more rain chances by Friday and into this weekend. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. A sheriff's deputy laid out some of the evidence against a Whitley County couple accused of killing a four-year-old. Brittany Slaughter and Adam Hayes are charged in the murder of four-year-old Chloe Darnell. A sheriff's deputy testified today that while Chloe's cause and manner of death had not been determined, Hayes said he saw Chloe fall from a short shelf in her room but EMS were not called because drugs were being used. They could bury the child, blame a fella named Alex for the disappearance, or they could go to prison. 
A judge found probable cause to send the case to the grand jury for possible indictment. The judge did agree to lower Slaughter's bond to $250,000, but kept Hayes' bond at $500,000 cash. Deputies say a Laurel County man charged with assault admitted to the allegations and said he just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. 23-year-old Logan Peters of East Bernstadt was arrested at a home off Little Arthur Ridge Road. Deputies say he tore the house up, threatened to kill his mother and other family members, threw a flower pot at his grandmother's car, and broke a window out of her home. He's charged with assault, criminal mischief, menacing, and terroristic threatening. Also in Laurel County, deputies are trying to find a man that did not show up in court to be sentenced. Officials say 39-year-old David Landry was not at home and he cut off his ankle bracelet. He was charged with burglary, receiving stolen property, and criminal mischief. If you have any information about where he is, you should call the Laurel County Sheriff's Office at 606-864-6600. Goodwill Industries of Kentucky is working on a new partnership focused on recidivism. Goodwill is partnering with the Pike County Detention Center to help 50 inmates transition into the workforce. From classes to counseling to providing transportation, the program hopes to ease the inmates into the community after incarceration. We're at least educating them to, to present themselves in a better way to the employer. The program kicked off in October and will be funded through September of next year. Jailer Brian Morris says it could help cut down the repeat offenders in the area by providing a stable restarting ground. We now know the cause of a train derailment in Rockcastle County. Officials say a failed wheel bearing on one of the cars is what caused it. People were evacuated from their homes the day before Thanksgiving as crews worked to clean up molten sulfur. As of yesterday morning, all the release product was removed and about 2,500 tons of impacted soil was replaced with clean material. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month. One in 26 people are living with the most common neurological disease that can cause seizures. Recently, you may have seen the new Netflix docuseries, Wrestlers. In it, Kentucky Sports Radio founder and host Matt Jones is seen having a seizure. For many, it was hard to watch, but no one found it harder to see than the Bell County native himself. Tonight, Amber Philpont is sitting down with Jones, who is known for his talk radio antics, but this conversation is much deeper than the wins and losses he is usually discussing. And it would be six o'clock if it's at seven. He is a statewide voice for all things sports in Kentucky. Kentucky is going to go into that game tomorrow. We're going to get the crowd there early. On a late September day, we found Kentucky Sports Radio host Matt Jones holding court outside a store in the summit in Lexington. Loyal Big Blue fans spending their morning listening and watching the sports radio show. Welcome back, hour number two here. Known for speaking his mind and breaking down the X's and O's of the game, Jones is also a guy who likes to stay busy when it comes to his other business ventures. He owns a bar, has written a best-selling book, Dimes has got a sleeper on and is a partner in Ohio Valley Wrestling based in Kentucky. Oh, there we go, His most recent new thing, a Netflix docuseries, it's good versus evil, following the wrestlers of OVW. But it was one scene in particular that garnered a lot of attention for Jones when cameras captured him having a seizure. The director talked to me about airing it. He, ba he basically said, are you okay with airing it? And, and you know, my initial inclination was no, not because of me, um, but because of my mother and I didn't want her to have to see it, she had never seen me have one. Jones says he had his first seizure at 22. Rary says because most people experience them earlier. Mine tend to be brought on by stress and lack of sleep, um, but you know, everybody's are different. Uh, Mine tend to start in the part of my brain that's short-term memory and speech. The one that was on Netflix is one of the wor worst ones I've had. They're not usually like that. For a guy who regularly has so many listening to him, Jones realized opening up about his epilepsy was important. I think the world's a better place when people realize they're not the only ones feeling whatever it is they're feeling. By talking about his epilepsy, it helps remove a stigma that often comes with a condition. You know, I'm not ashamed to have epilepsy. It's, it's a medical condition and there's nothing I can do about it. I take medication and that helps. And I wanted to show people that you 
you can have a condition like that and still succeed and still go through life and you shouldn't be ashamed of it. Jones told us his health has often paid the price for his success. I overworked myself for a lot of my life looking back. I mean, I, I did too many things. I took too much on. In recent years, he's been open about his mental health and combating anxiety, something many of his fellow listeners can relate to across the state. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to and just, just listen and say, hey, I've been there. And that can mean a lot, and so I hope I've been able to do that for some folks. Jones is one of 174,000 Kentuckians living with epilepsy, but in his case, he has a voice that carries a message he hopes is heard far beyond the airwaves. It's simple. You're not alone. A lot of times it's just somebody comes up to me at the bar and says, my kid has epilepsy. And watching you do that, I sat with my kid and watched it and we got to talk about what it's like for them. Well, you know what that means when you can have that effect on any human being? That's a lot better than sitting there and entertaining them on the radio. Amber Philpot reporting. Now here's some important seizure first aid to remember. Stay with the person if they're having a seizure and remain calm. Keep them safe, including protecting their head. Make sure to turn the person on their side if they're not awake to keep their airway clear. And if the seizure lasts longer than five minutes, call 911. County clerks will waive late fees during a system reset early next year. The state is updating its vehicle information database. It will be offline for at least a week starting January 1st. When the update is finished, county clerks say there still may be some hiccups. Everybody who has a January birthday, myself included, we're all going to be impacted by this and then we may even see some additional impacts as we try to work through what we anticipate is going to be a pretty heavy backlog. Online vehicle registration services will pause on December 28th. County clerk offices will halt in-person registration services on January 1st. The weekend full of shopping deals did not end today as they were available online for Cyber Monday. And several local businesses with online stores participated as well, saying this gives folks from across the country and beyond the opportunity to shop small and gift items from right here in Appalachia while enjoying a discount. Appalachian Apparel Company owner Joey McKinney says they've seen great success thanks to the Internet. There's a lot of people that can't come here, so being able to offer those services all over the world and, and see our stuff shipped out to all over the country and all these different places and then we see it on social media, it's really cool to, to have that connection with the customers that, that may never make it to our store. McKinney says through the years they've shipped out items to all 50 states and eight different countries. And he says Cyber Monday gives them the opportunity to say thank you through a holiday discount. More hostages freed. I'm Nicole Skanga at the White House as officials welcome a two-day extension of the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Plus, we are getting a taste of winter tonight. Also tomorrow, your first alert forecast after this break.